This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Hertam Watko and welcome to our program. Last week we talked about the Citizens National Guard simply on multiple topics that are going on or what we call current events. This week we would like to zero in on the direction the country is about to take and that's basically the change of political system or what we call federalism. But let's talk about the economics of this proposed federalism. The Constitutional Commission has put together that they basically a majority out of 19 that attended, except for one person, I think Kanoi wasn't able to make his presentation. Uh, they promote a hybrid of sorts, meaning a presidential vice president and the parliament. But is it all the politics? Is that all the, the structure? Is that what the federalism is all about? Or how about all the other issues? Term extensions, they're saying na hindi na kailangan ng term extension because it won't really matter. For that matter, I guess dynasties won't matter if the dynast is performing properly, so it says. Then you've got the economic provisions. Do we agree? Because uh, in Southeast Asia, the CN, if I'm not mistaken, there are still land ownership limitations in most of the countries other than Singapore. How about the 60-40 rule? How about the limitations on media, education, etc. Today we're going to discuss this and with us we have an economist, a man of many feats and experiences. His name's Arthur Mendoza Alvendia. We had him as a guest last week together with uh, Butch Valdez. He's a 50-year practitioner in economics, so I guess we have quite a resource person. Applied philosophy and systemic thinking. His work has focused on creating systemic solutions to, to third world development barriers, applying to multidiscipline framework premised on the humanistic philosophy of integrated development. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit heavy when you put all these words side by side, but you'll understand as the course of the discussion unfolds. The summary, he's involved in these perspectives. Let's see, Development Management Strategy and Policy, head of, head and the direct management staff under the president. Technology and Industry Development, he was the Director General in the Technology Resource Center. Development Finance, as Vice Chairman of the Presidential Committee on the OECF Funds of Japan and the Philippines. Power Sector and Public Utilities, as Executive Director of Power Development Council and Presidential Coordinating Officer for Power and member of the Nuclear Finance Team. Small and medium scale industries and livelihood programs, obviously Chairman. Sectoral Program Development and Funding Mechanisms for um, Forest Resource Securitization Program for the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Indigenous People Development Programs. I know, hold on, just hang on there. This is quite a CV and I'm going to read only 30% of what was provided to me. So Indigenous People Development Programs and Institution Building. He pioneered the, the development programs and institution building for unification and economic empowerment for the Indigenous people. 
international consultancies for program development and funding of key sectors. You know, if I keep going, this is going to be the whole show. So let me introduce to you once again, Art Alvin Dia. Art, I have to do away with it. Ang haba, ang dami mong... And you know what's interesting? In the last 15, 20%, you're still currently very active on a lot of these projects. You really haven't stepped out, so I guess the life and blood that flows in your, in, in, in your body is about service to government, so it seems. Or at least to better economics than what we're experiencing, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the federalism very quickly. Where are we going? Because everyone is talking about basically the political system as if that is the most important part. Is it, it not the economics as well if we are to have trickle down economics to help the poor? the relatively very poor. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, is it not? Yeah, in fact, uh, that's the, the problem, I think, in the current discussion, is we keep on focusing- Our Politics. On politics. If you look at, if you take what I have said about integrated development, you have to look at it as a total system. You know? When you talk of a system, you're talking of what do you build, mm -hmm. the building system that you're building mm -hmm. with, and the builder. Okay. Okay. Build. Okay. The builder. Okay. 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 I'm focusing on that right now. Seems to be just on the builder. Okay. We, uh, and thinking that the, if you change your leader, you will be able to change what has happened. But that, mm. if you look at the other history, it has not. We have had 50 years of mm. political, uh, of of uh, democracy, <laughs> and market system. Okay. Mm. That's what we have been. But what has it? Uh, and, but if you will see, up to now, we have not developed any industry. We have extracted, we have foreign investments have come in, they extracted our natural resources. And go out with it. And go out with it. In, just a quick example, in, in coconut, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we are supposed to be the leaders of that. If you, mm -hmm. Market economics says comparative advantage, you should be the leaders in coconut industry. It's not. We should be. We, we should, should be because yes. we have the natural resource. Oh, and yet, not, huh? yes, we do have. Mm -hmm. But what did we do? They, we export 80% of our nat of our coconut mm -hmm. oil. You know, mm -hmm. Indonesia keeps 80% of their coconut oil in their country. 80% of our coconut oil goes out, and is the industries have been bought have been established in Europe in Rotterdam. That's where he's in. Dapat dito yung industriya sa coconut, is what you're saying. Comprehensive, dapat dito lahat. Dapat nandito. Uh, yung forest natin, we had, we had 15 million hectares of forest. It was depleted, and now we're down, we've ta it's 15, been taken yeah. out, now we're down to 1.5 million hectares. But do you have a, a wood industry? Do you have a plywood industry? Do you have a furniture industry? Wala nga. Wala. Puro export lahat. Uh, so, pareho din ang natural resource natin and that goes with mining. Yes, ganun din. And, that's, and that exactly is one of my greatest fear. You're now saying foreign, foreign investors can come in and they can own land. My golly, you're going to give away your, pati your, your natural resources? Are you going to give that away, your last remaining mines? Mm, I see the point. You, okay. Pero yung ownership ng mga residential, that's, that's insignificant. Yeah, yeah. But why, why do you even have to give control and ownership. There are different types of owner, of rights, mm. property rights, as you know. Mm. Mayroon use of rock rights, lease may rights, lease, oh. may lease. Oh. Yeah. Why can we not be happy with the, giving them uh, the giving lease rights? Giving 30-year lease. Giving 30 year balik, lease. Oh. Alam After po, all, Singapore, 100 oh. years, yeah, parang ganun. Yeah, and when you say capital anyway, what does capital look for? What does foreign investment, a return on their capital. And what did they, when, they talk of, when they talk of return on capital, they're talking of return of their capital in five years or ten years. That's mm -hmm. it. If they ha if they get a good return on that basis, okay na. Mm -hmm. So why why do you have to give away indefinitely indefinitely control? I and see you will wind up with the people just like the just like. Why is it this learned group of people, the consultative commission, that consults supposedly Congress and the president? Why don't they tackle issues? on the economics. <laughs> well, you, you smile as if it's sinister. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, because, you know, 
the builder is just as good as the minds that he has, the mindsets yes, yes, that he yes. has. If you look at what happened at our, in our history and the world history, mm -hmm. you know, in 1970, there was a major shift in economic thinking. When the monetarists, mm, IMF, the World uh, Bank, came in and be, well, yeah, uh, and what happened, you know? Because uh, Justice Powell at that time had con uh, was consulted by the conservatives and the business people in America, and they said, what's happening? Uh, they were reacting to De La, uh, Francis Roosevelt, mm. uh, Roosevelt's uh, Keynesian policy, anyway. Yeah. So he said, no, you have to bring your own thinking into the schools, into the think tanks. And, and exactly, that's what happened in the Philippines. 1970, mm -hmm. I was a student of Rockefeller. I was a Rockefeller uh, mm. scholar in UP. Mm -hmm. you know? And they had a Ford Foundation for our program and Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. They brought in monetarist thinking. Uh, this, was, this, is, uh, this is the free market thinking. You know? Yes, the free market. Uh, which means, essentially, you bring your money, you allocate capital to those who are efficient and are able to pay back. And of who, course. And who is that? Only, of course, it's rational. Mm -hmm. you know? And it, it makes sense. It makes progress. Of no? course. And, but it also means taking it away from those who are inefficient, those who are small, those who are weak. And what's that? That's 98% of your economy. Mm, okay, okay. So, in the balance. Uh, in the balance. So, you develop, uh, so that's one thing. Anyway, the, what was brought in then at that time, in effect, is the foundation of what is now globalization economics, okay. which means minimize government role in the economy. Free market. Free market. Let the market develop itself. Uh, which means mar government should stay away from the market. Uh, it should, uh, it should let the market forces allocate the, you know, themselves. Okay. So it means uh, uh, less, uh, less social spending. You know? Never mind what, you know. so mm -hmm. uh, it means control of capital, control of currency. In 1970, Central Bank Charter, the Central mm -hmm. Bank Charter, which had two goals uh, before that, it was national development and currency management. Mm. A, a mission from Berkeley came to the Philippines and said, uh, and did a study, and they said, uh, change your charter, take away the national development goal, and in effect, just left uh, Central Bank with the role of currency. managing currency. And so that's been, uh, so that means uh, they don't care what happens to the national development. Or to the, as long as the inflation is being controlled see, mm -hmm. and fiscal uh, balance is maintained. Correct. But Correct. What has, what has that done to the economy? You see, we've not built our industries. We've even given away our the utilities that, that we have, we have mm -hmm. built. Power and, uh, power and water. Making privatized. Making privatized. Uh -huh. oh. And what they... Uh, and our economists were saying, if you privatize, competition, uh, competition will bring down the price. Look at what's happened to our power rates. It's the highest in the world. Yeah, yeah, oh. balik oh. Telecom, we were very happy. Sabi nila, sabi natin, oh, we opened up our telecom to private. Oh, like improve. Mas oh, no, what do we define now? So, so now you're saying the role of government in developing the country has been minimized yes. over the last five decades. Yes. When it should be the other way around. You were saying, what were those two words? Col colonization. Uh, colonized. Colonized. We have, we have a colonized economy. Yeah, a colonized economy. And that continues up to now. That mm -hmm. is continuing up to now. Wherein the role dapat of government is to build industry that will be here talaga. I that, mean, yeah. to f comprehensive. You, you get the natural resource, we build it here, yes. and then we sell it out after. Exactly. Uh, Balik So Balik -tad. now, government's negating itself, going out. Yeah. And then agriculture, for example. Okay. We should be developing our agriculture and building our industries based on agriculture. Agro-based industry. Be, no, uh, we should be building our industry based and on And yet, what's happening? 
uh, the average age of the farmer the now is 57, 57 years 57, old. Yes. What does that mean? In five years, you don't have farmers anymore. Agriculture. You don't have agriculture man lang. You see? So currency management na lang yan. Bilita, import na yung import. Tataas, oh, tataas, tataas nila, lahat. Uh, listen to the people. They keep on saying, oh, you cannot compete with Vietnam because they have the rivers. And, and, yeah. Excuse me. If you look at Australia, uh, they are able to produce 10 tons of rice, 10 yes. to 15 tons of rice per hectare on that much water in their, in their fields. Uh, Why? What it takes? Investment. So the key is investment, not water. Yeah, go ahead. Now, the investment as it comes in uh, has to go into the industry build up. And the, yeah, the whole chain. I mean, you have to improve your breed, your seedlings. You have to improve your harvesting. You have to improve so technology, your technology. Yeah. And then link this to industries directly. Directly. Integrate them directly. Uh, Hindi yung maraming traders in between. Like what it is now. Yeah, like what it is now. now. Oh, NFA, so, yes. oh. uh, so uh, they keep on saying, uh, let's have farm to market roads. But who does the farm to market road benefit? The trader pa rin. The trader pa rin. So, <laughs> this is, this is uh, the kind of thing. And now you say, and then, and this, then this is the other thing. Mines. You know? mm -hmm. We're talking about mines uh, in, the, in the rural areas. These are mainly, a lot of them are in the Lumad areas, yes. by the way. No? Yes, yes, the uh, Lumad areas. Kaya nag yeah. eh. Oh. And who's the number one enemy of the, of the Lumad in, in, in terms of the development of, and, and of the, their areas? Yeah, yeah. No? the local government. Kalaban nga eh. Tapos, if you federalize mo ngayon. So you're giving more, even more power to these guys yeah, to make deals with... Uh, foreigners, outsiders, foreigners, yeah. outsiders, basically. Yeah. And, that's, but, and that is what colonized eco mm. e economy is. And uh, an economy that is really run by foreign interests working with local oligarchs. That is what you have. Now, you ask yourself, does federalism help that? Okay, we're going to have to take a... Well, let's stop right <laughs> there. Uh, the discussion is not meant to alarm you. It's supposed to inform you. We are talking about issues that need to be taken up, lest, well, not necessarily being taken up by the so-called, the learned 20 that are supposed to promote to the president. I understand the president's position being I'm pro Duterte anyway, so I get that bias across, simply because he knows it's from the security point of view. And as Butch Valdez pointed out, I think it was last month on the CNG program as well, maybe it's best maybe to federalize the areas that are problematic when it comes to that, the Bank Samoro. Maybe that's why they're trying to pass it. Either way, when we come back, we're going to expand uh, the, the discussion but still on the economics. But we will introduce another uh, resource person who will be sitting with us. He's been here many times, and he used to have a show right here on GNN. His name is Professor Gil Santos, who will be sitting in with us. Stay with us, and we have more for you.